Hey YouTube, thanks for clicking. If you've been watching the series so far, you'll have spotted a theme emerging. Over this series, I'm recreating in After Effects all the planets in the solar system, trying to avoid using any third-party plugins which cost extra. Each tutorial is separate and tries to show a different aspect of After Effects, so I'm not repeating myself. I'm primarily using Video Copilot's Orb plugin though. It's free and does a great job of planet making. If you can't use Orb, then check out Making Mercury, which uses CC Sphere and some expressions to get pretty much the same result. If you are using VC Orb, you'll know there's absolutely no point in me doing a tutorial on how to recreate Earth, because Andrew Kramer launched Orb with a tutorial nailing our planet. The guy built the plugin to create Earth, so of course he was going to nail it. So instead, for Sol 3, I decided the best approach was to demonstrate how to add different features to Earth. This video is covering adding a storm, but the two companion videos cover adding a label in 3D space which identifies the location on the surface, and the third adds an aurora. All three are kind of quick to do, but I figure that if you're only interested in auroras, you wouldn't want to sit through the entire video first. So, storms. Did you know that storms named for female names actually kill more people? Psychologists have a theory it's because we don't think they sound as scary. I have to confess, when it came to test out my idea for a storm, I did run into a few snags which I wasn't expecting. What I'm saying is that in principle this was an easy idea, in practice there were added complications. The first complication was being able to find a storm photographed from above. Google image search, here we come. So what we're looking for is a photo of a hurricane with the entire storm in frame. It needs to be looking straight down and over the sea, otherwise we're going to have to spend a lot of time in Photoshop. Oh, and we should respect copyright by only using the reuse with modification filter. People deserve their own IP. Fortunately, thanks to climate change and satellite imagery, there's plenty to choose from. Although by the time you apply the criteria above, your choices become limited. I selected this one. It's a NASA photo from Hurricane Isabel in 2003. So now let's jump into After Effects. The first thing we need to do is visit Video Copilot's Ultra 3D Earth tutorial, download the textures and work through AK's awesome tutorial. If you haven't done that, pause this video and work through his. See you in 29 minutes. Okay, you're back. Let's bring in our storm. Now in Andrew Kramer's tutorial, he'd already created a pre-comp called Earth Clouds Alpha. Double click on the layer to open up the pre-comp and then add in the sat photo. Now use a mask tool to draw a mask around the sat photo. Solo it for a moment and turn on the checkerboard. Make sure the layer is selected, hit MM to open the mask options. Add a lot of feathering to the mask, we don't want a hard line and you'll also have to decrease the mask expansion as we hit the edges of the image. Unsew over the image and turn off the checkerboard. Something isn't quite right about my clouds. I don't know if I missaved the tutorial when I was working through it or if I missed a step, but I just need to adjust the shape of the clouds layer. Select the clouds layer and hit S to show the scale. Then uncheck the infinity linked symbol and reduce the width and increase the height until it fills the comp. The storm doesn't really match the clouds, so with the clouds layer selected, hit E to show the effects and then highlight both and copy them. Then select the hurricane layer and paste. The effects should copy over. And now the colors and the alpha match, but we can see the clouds layer through the hurricane. We're going to use the circle effect to make a cutout in the clouds. Because I've messed with the scale settings, I'm going to add this as an adjustment layer. Go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Make sure this layer is above the clouds layer, but below the storm layer. And when it's selected, then choose Effect, Generate, Circle. The clouds disappear, and at the heart of the storm, you can see a white circle. If I added this directly, I would have had a bit of an egg shape. Before we change the size and feathering, we need to see the clouds again. So check the Invert Circle checkbox, and then in the Blending Mode, select Stencil Alpha. Now the effect is cutting out a circle. Increase the radius until it covers the storm, and feather it until you're happy. Now I want to add some distortion to the nearby clouds. 
making sure the adjustment layer is still selected, go to Effect, Distort, Twirl, and mess with the settings until you're happy, making sure to use negative rotation to line up the distortion with the storm. If we jump back for a moment to the Earth Comp, we can see we've created a storm larger than North America, so should probably scale this down. But rather than scaling and rematching everything, I'm going to use expressions to make my life a little easier later. Back in the pre-comp, select the Hurricane Photo and tap S to reveal the scale properties. Add a keyframe and then tap P to show the position properties and add a keyframe here too. Now tap the U key twice to expose both these keyframes. On the adjustment layer, twirl down the layer settings and open up both the scale and twirl effect settings. Now, using the pick width next to the circle's position, drag this onto the hurricane's position properties and do the same for twirl center. This way, wherever the hurricane goes, the effects will follow. For the scale, it's a little bit more complicated, but not much. On the circle's radius stopwatch, hold down Alt and click on it and then type value times. This allows you to adjust the size manually if you need to. Then after the asterisk, use the pick whip to highlight the first 100 in the hurricane scale setting, then type divide by 100. What we're doing here is multiplying the radius by converting our hurricane scale from a percentage to a fraction. We can copy this expression and using alt click add it to the twirl radius too. Now, no matter what size I make the hurricane, the effects will match it. You may have noticed the eye of the storm does not line up with the center of the layer, so if I want to add any rotation, the storm it will appear lopsided. We can correct that by select the hurricane layer and hit A to expose the anchor settings. And now adjust these coordinates until the eye lines up. Finally, I'm going to add another twirl, this time to the hurricane layer. I'm going to make sure the center of the effect is on the eye, and then I'm going to add an expression to the angle. Alt click on the stopwatch and type time times minus 20. That adds a bit of rotational movement to the storm. All the speeds and timings are up to you really, but it depends what you're going for. And that's it. I could tweak the position of the twirl and circle effects by editing the expressions and adding plus value. And I could add movement to the rotation just by keyframing the hurricane layer. By using the same circle idea with a wiggle expression and a strobe light effect on another layer, I've added flashes of lightning. You can see I have done that from the project file linked below. If you like this tutorial, please consider sharing and commenting. Subscriptions help me justify to myself that it's worth putting in the effort, and don't forget to check out the other two Earth tutorials and the rest of this series. Next time, Mars. Look forward to seeing you there, but thanks for watching.